of Fox Sports. We are Black Mark. We are Florida. Oh, even in the park. It was hot today in New York and warm tonight as the Marlins and the Mets get ready to go. Yeah, Mr. Met is here. And so is Jose Reyes as he returns to a Mets uniform for the first time since 2011. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Preston Wilson. Welcome to New York. Game two of this series. Resiliency is a good thing in this game, and the Marlins need to show some after a, a, a loss last night when they had a 6 nothing lead and the bullpen couldn't hold it. Well, you also have to have a very short memory and just realize that yesterday is gone and go from today. The bullpen has been good most of the year. You don't expect them to have another performance like they did yesterday. And this ball club is a good offensive ball club. Just go from there. Speaking of memories, Met fans have some great ones with Jose Reyes. Now, of course, Reyes coming signed after uh, the Colorado Rockies let him go suspended by Major League Baseball for violating their domestic abuse policy. They're right there. The hug with Wilmer Flores. He's going to be at third base. Flores actually gets a start at second tonight. How will the Mets use Reyes and what kind of welcome will he have with the fans? Well, I think first it's going to depend on how well he becomes acclimated to that third base position. Uh, that's going to be a big key, but also they're going to use him where they can give other guys spare days off. They're going to give Neil Walker a day off today. They're going to be able to give uh, 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 Asdru Cabrera days off with him at shortstop. They're going to be able to do a lot of mixing and matching because Jose Reyes is very versatile. All right, we'll see that tonight as he's leading off. We'll see what kind of reception he gets in the bottom of the first. Let's talk about the starters tonight. Lefties are on the menu. Weigh in Chen and Steven Matz. Well, these guys are, are both lefties, but they differ in this one way. Steven Matz has a lot more velocity. He gets more strikeouts uh, at times, but really, Wei Yin Chen has got to stick to his game plan. That's to execute pitches, get ahead of these Mets hitters, and put them away. Don't be so hittable when you get in those two strike counts. Marlon saw Matz early in the season hit, hit him hard here in New York. And in New York tonight, Chris Johnson live. He's been hot lately, Mr. Johnson. On an email and Twitter Tuesday as well, in the Big Apple. Eh, come on back.
presenting sponsor of Marlins Baseball. Live from New York, it's the Marlins and the Mets and Chris Johnson. Jessica? Thanks so much, Rich. CJ, you're coming off of a three-hit game. How much has it helped you to get consistent at-bats over the past few days? Um, it helps, but I, I try to keep myself ready. I try not to use that as a uh, as a crutch. You know, I, I want to make sure that I'm ready no matter how many at-bats I'm getting. Obviously, being in there uh, a little bit more um, is good for me. Uh, unfortunately, it's because of JB got hurt, but hopefully we get him back soon. You're swinging the bat well. You're playing good defense. What do you feel like you you add to this team when you're in the lineup? I try to add as much as I can. I try not to stick with one thing. If I need to be playing defense, that's my job. If I need to you know, start when JB's down and get some hits, uh, that's my job too. So I, I'll try to do whatever I can to help this, this really good ball club. A tough one last night. How important is it to have a short memory and focus on getting back in the win column tonight? It, it's, it's important. I think uh, we're all pretty confident in our bullpen. I think if we wanted to to have that same situation again today, we'll take it. Um, we don't have any doubts about the guys in our bullpen. They've been so good. Um, we'll give them one every now and again. So that was theirs, and uh, and they'll be back. Appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. Rich, back to you. All right, thank you. Always nice to have a live interview right before first pitch. Wei-Yin Chen takes aim at the Metropolitans. It's Marlins. It's Mets. It's next. Sports Florida is brought to you by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. By your local Toyota dealers, let's go places. And by Southwest Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. It's been a while since Jose Reyes has taken the field as a New York Met, all the way back to 2011. And for the first time in his major league career, he's at third base. On a Twitter Tuesday tonight, here comes Miami's lineup brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. But Danny Esferi is leading off. Martin Prado is second. Third, Kristen Yelich in the cleanup spot is Marcelo Zuna. Jordan Carlos Stanton is batting fifth. Chris Johnson is in the sixth hole. Miguel Rojas is seventh. Jeff Mathis eighth. And Wei Yin Chen is batting ninth. 25 year old Steven Matz on the hill. Matz. Seven and three, a 3 4 0 ERA. And the local kid who's made good, born in Stony Brook. High draft pick by the Mets. Second round pick back in 2009. Now the Marlins saw him April 11th, and he didn't last long. An inning and two thirds, 
Seven runs on six hits. Of course, he made just the six starts last year, but he was in the rotation in the postseason, made three postseason starts. And so here he is, part of that uh, talented young rotation for the Mets. Defensively, for the Mets, it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Cespedes, Juan Lagares gets a start in center field. Curtis Granderson's in right. Reyes and James Loney, who made a big defensive play yesterday at the corners. Wilmer Flores goes from third to second. Neil Walker getting the night off as Drupal Cabrera is at shorts. Travis Darno, who gave up his number for Mr. Reyes, switching from seven to 18. And Terry Collins, who did such a great job last year, has his Mets hot right now. They've won five straight, 45 and 37 in possession of one of the wild card spots in the National League. Ed Chavarria, Martin Prado, Christian Yelich against the lefty Mats in this ball game. Underway with a fastball. Phil Cousy calls it a strike. Tom Woodring, Dan Bellino, and Tom Hallion on the bases tonight. Two for four, Ed Chavarria last night with a double and an RBI. And another strike at 95 miles an hour. And there's the Velocity you talked about. Yeah, definitely a big time power arm for a lefty for Mats. He's been even up to 97 before, so he's one of those rare lefty starters that has that big time velocity. And when he gets going, man, he, he can mow you down one after the other. Echevarria guides one out to short. Cabrera fires to first in time. What do you have on the scouting report? It's brought to you by Auto Nation. Well, he hails from Stony Brook, which is only an hour away from City Field. Took a two year gap between his uh, Tommy John surgery in 2010, came back in 2012, but he's aggressive with his heat. Mentioned that fastball can get up to 97 miles an hour. Martin Prado. Rondo went 0 for 5. The Marlins didn't lack for hits as they had 17 of them, but lost 8 to 6 in a painful afternoon on the 4th of July. And when you when you often out hit teams but don't outscore them, there's two things that come into play. It's lack of speed and lack of power. Speed gives you the ability to advance bases without getting hits. Power gives you the ability to collect runs in bunches. Breaking ball is a strike. Man, that was a dandy right there. Back door out on the corner. Marlins have had success against lefty starters, including Mats. That was three months ago. Prado up the middle on a hop. Flores flips the first in time. And there are two outs. So a couple of outs on the ground, and here is Yelich now. Yelich had a couple of hits against Mats in that April ball game. And he had a couple of hits on the 4th of July. Mats misses away. Both of these left handers haven't won much over the last month. Mats has a run of no decisions. Four of them and a couple of loss a couple of losses since a May 25th. Win over the Nationals. And Wei-Yin Chen has one win since the 11th of May. That's just, he's just staying right on that edge, man. One, two, Yelich. Cabrera. Three outs on the ground for Steven Matz. Wei in Chen gets the ball next.
Mets lineup. And you can hear the ovation for Jose Reyes. It's brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. Well, you mentioned Reyes at the top. Curtis Granison moved down to the second spot. Cespedes is third. Wilma Flores is batting cleanup as Drew Cabrera is batting fifth. James Loney is sixth. Juan Lagar is seventh. Travis Darnold is eighth. Stephen Matz is batting ninth. And the ovation still lingers. Fans are on their feet. Reyes, on the tip of the helmet. And he stands in to face Wei-In Chen. And a fastball for a strike. Opens up uh, Reyes' Knights. Curtis Granderson, you want a Cespedes behind him. Reyes getting the start at third and wearing number seven, as he did in his Mets career. He pulls that one wide of third base. What must Wei-In Chen do tonight to get a win? Well, he's got to finish off batters. I think he's done a good job of throwing strikes so far this year. But you see that 276 opponent's batting average. A lot of that has come when he's ahead of batters, and he's got to do a better job of not being so hittable when he has the advantage. Something Re like that. Reyes going after a high fastball, and Chen elevating that four-seamer, and he gets a strikeout. 0-2 pitch, got the advantage, elevate the fastball, make it hard on the hitter. You know, sometimes when you're a strike thrower, you have to learn when to not throw strikes. And I think that's what Chen is battling right now, understanding that there are times where I got to back out of that strike zone, get away, expand a little bit. Now, Curtis Granderson. Granderson popped his 15th home run of the season yesterday, part of that Mets comeback from a 6 0 Miami lead. And of course, he was a prolific home run hitter when he was a Yankee. In 2011 and 2012, he hit 84 homers and drove in 225 runs just in those two years combined. In his first year here as a Met, did not go well. But last year, 26 homers, 33 doubles. And this year, he's on pace to get upper 20s in home runs or close to 30. Yelich in, Echeverria out, Etch squares up and makes the catch. That's an out, but that's way too good of a pitch to hit right there. Ball's right in the middle. Southwest Airlines brings you Miami's defense tonight. Yelich, Ozuna, Stanton. Martin Prado, Chris Johnson on the corners. Miguel Rojas, Danny Echeverria up the middle, and Jeff Mathis behind home plate. And here is Cespedes. Three hits, two doubles, two RBIs. And you see as the Mets have passed the halfway point, he doubled those numbers, and that's an enormous year from Cespedes. It's a nice round numbers, aren't they? Yeah, and of course, he was kind of the engine that drove the Mets in August and September of last year. Drove them to the National League East title, drove them to 90 wins, Smokes that one to the left for a hit. So the Mets have their first hit. Wilmer Flores now is in the cleanup spot. Of course, it, with all of the Jose Reyes talk over the last week and a half, two weeks, Reyes signed, sent to the minor leagues, groomed to play third. Wilmer Flores, of course, who has made a pretty good living here in New York as the odd man out in a lot of situations. He had the big game on Sunday with six hits and two homers. And he finds himself in the starting lineup when Reyes arrives tonight. Neil Walker getting the night off. Flores is versatile. He can play four infield spots. He can even play over at first. And he's at second tonight. Chen's 2-0. Good pitch. 
Took a little off of that. Change up. Got Wilma Flores thinking I'm a 2-0 count. You're going to try to hit me a souvenir. Pulls a string on it. And the count is two and two. It is an email in Twitter Tuesday. We'll get into that in a moment. And of course, tonight the All Stars being named. And when we get word on the National League and the American League All Stars, we pass that along to you. Flores now with a count, two and two. Cespedes at first. Ooh, and Chen working down in the zone and in. Wow, that's ah, that's got to be called a strike, right? That's that's just got the bottom of the zone. Man, that's a tough pitch to take. Good job, Flores. Three, two. Cespedes runs, and Flores pops it into the seats. This is a long home stand for the Mets. And for the Marlins, an opportunity with the team in front of them in the standings. And the fish have played well in this ballpark lately. The Marlins have come in here and won some series. Three consecutive road series going six and four in that time. And that fourth loss coming last night. Right center. Stanton is there. And he makes the catch. So way in Chen is scoreless first. This ball game underway. Day. Here's how you can tweet us at Fox Marlins or email us foxmarlins at gmail.com. Hashtag it America's Pastime. Foxmarlins at gmail.com is our email address at Fox Marlins. You can uh, tweet us as well. We're driven by Ford tonight. Marcelo Zuna standing in. Certainly a, a night where the Marlins are hopeful that Ozuna's name is called and that he is, in fact, a National League All Star. He has had that type of year. You see the numbers for Ozuna. He's been in the top 10 in slugging percentage throughout the year. It's OPS as well. He takes a strike, he counts one and one. One for four last night with a walk. Matt's elevates. It's two and one.
He is not your soft tossing lefty. No, he is not. He's one of those guys that you got to get ready for. You can't wait around and think, okay, I might sit on breaking ball. You got to hit the heater first with him. Two balls, two strikes with the Mets run. They've won five in a row. They're still four back. Remember Washington, even though they lost yesterday, has won seven of their last ten. So Washington a four game lead. The Marlins six and a half back in the East. And Matz with a good sharp breaking ball has retired the first four he's faced. Oh, this ball is late and it's sharp. It's like a hard slider. See the grip there. See the rotation on the pitch. Stan going after the first pitch and he shoots it to the right side. And that's going to be a base hit with the shift on. Stanton looking to punch it to right. His batting practice tonight was extremely to right field. Everything to right. Home runs to right. Line drives to right. Ground balls to right. Just trying to get that balance back. Keep that left side closed. And he gets a base hit here with one out. So if they're going to shift you that extremely, you don't have to hit it well at all. Just got to try to find a way to get it past the pitcher on that side of the field. Barry Bonds and Frank Medicino monitoring that batting practice tonight. And here's Chris Johnson. Johnson takes a strike. Our first email of the night is from Marlon Maniac. Actually, it's a tweet. We're talking about all star games and uh, possibilities for the Marlins tonight. The all star team for the American League, National League being revealed as we speak. Any chance a special place for each row in the All Star game? Johnson smashes one foul. A special place, I think that would be something uh, that would have to be decided by the league. I think there are other players who have put up better numbers, even though each row is a great story. He's approaching 3,000. Uh, the fact of the matter is, each row has a lot more baseball left in him. He's not going to be done after this season, or at least it doesn't appear so. I uh, I don't see any special provisions being put in place. And that I, I think the key word there is that Itro isn't planning to retire. If he were planning retirement, maybe the likelihood that Beijing baseball would invite him. I think they've done that in the past. As Matting as uh, Don Mattingly said when asked about that uh, three weeks ago, he said, "Hey, that that would be nice, but there's a few more guys in Marlin uniforms that deserve it." Uh, more so than each row in the left field a base hit for Johnson. So the Marlins have put together two hits against Mats and here comes Miguel Rojas. Marlins with the right handed bats against Mats so Rojas getting a start in place of Dietrich Johnson is in one way or the other because Justin Bohr is not with the team right now Bohr was sent back to Miami. To have an MRI on that troublesome right ankle that he sprained and injured in Atlanta. And Rojas has hit quite well against lefties this year with an average of 379. Mats with a breaking ball for a strike. Stand at second, Johnson at first. Good take. Breaking ball down and ends, able to lay off of it, get your count even. Still hasn't seen the fastball yet from Rojas, uh, from Matt, so Rojas hasn't. Into the bat, Matt's out there, and the turn is in time. And a double play ends the Marlins second. Matt's to Cabrera to Lodi.
And just announced the Marlins will have four players in uniform in San Diego, at least initially, elected by the player vote. Now, Fernando Rodney did most of his work, almost all of his work with the Padres, but he will appear in a Marlins uniform. Marcelo Zuna by player's vote and elected by the manager is Jose Fernandez and A.J. Ramos. And that would be Terry Collins, of course. Collins has seen plenty of uh, both of those guys with some help from uh, Major League Baseball as well. Cabrera into center and all-star Marcelo Zuna makes the catch. Now, Preston, you were an all-star. Who told you that you made it? What was your reaction when you heard it? I was told by, I think it was my manager, Clint Hurdle at the time uh, that I made it. And it was just, you know, it was, it was one of those things where I had to wait till the last minute because even though I had the numbers, uh, you know, you have those perennial all-star guys who were, who are there. I think at the break I had uh, 23 home runs and 91 RBIs, but you have those guys who consistently make the all-star team who they always get the first pot. So I had to wait my turn to hear it and I was I was voted in by the manager at the end. James Loney now. Who was a Dusty Baker at the time. We continue to monitor the announcements and we'll uh, give you the Met players when we get a chance and the rest of the National League and American League teams. But it has been announced that uh, four players with the Marlins will be headed to San Diego. Now the other thing you always have to take into consideration is there will be injuries there will be additions there will be subtractions some guys will either not be able to pitch which means adding a pitcher. There might be an injury or two with a position player along the way. Here is Juan Lagares. And Lagares takes down low. All right, email. Let's do Bills. Bill sent in a bunch of questions. Top of the list. Can D. Gordon still play minor league baseball while he's being punished? He can start, I believe, 10 days before his suspension is up to play minor league games. But uh, in between now and then, he cannot participate in a organized professional game, whether it's minor leagues or major leagues. Fastball in. Bill's next question. We all love Giancarlo, but isn't it time he went down to the minor leagues? to get his swing straightened out. Here's the 2 1 pitch. It's fouled back. Preston I, I will defer to you on that. Well I think if you're going to send a player down to the minor leagues to get their swing straightened out you got to make sure that the guys that you have down there for him to be working with uh, that are going to be able to straighten that out. But we're talking about a veteran guy who's got a big contract. Uh, the odds, odds of him going down to the minor leagues if he's not injured are not very likely. Is it better for him to figure it out here? I mean, look, look, he's a he's a veteran player. It's not like it's his second year. Right. So. I mean, just watching him, it feels like he is starting to get there. It's fits and starts. It's three steps forward, two steps back. Right. He had a base hit yesterday. He's got a hit tonight. So I think I mean, it's it's, it's Bill, it's an interesting thought. But being able to be monitored by Barry Bonds and Frank Minichino. Right. I, I would rather him have Bonds and Minichino's eyes on him daily than whoever else may be in the Marlins organization. Easy, easy. Chen steers it, flips to first in time in a one, two, three second scoreless ball game. Back to emails and tweets when we get to the third.
voted in by the players. Here are your starters in the National League. Lots of Cubs. Bryant, Rizzo, Zobrist, Addison Russell. Dexter Fowler makes it as well. Bryce Harper, Jonas Cespedes, and Buster Posey are the only non-Cubs in the starting lineup for the National League. Here's Mathis, and he sends one to center field. Ligaris is there, and he makes the catch. Well struck, but out number one, and that brings up Wei in Chen. The reserves for the National League, we told you that uh, there are plenty of Marlins there. Jose Fernandez, one of the pitchers. A.J. Ramos makes it. And Fernando Rodney makes it. Rodney, a player vote, and uh, Rodney, of course, a uh, San Diego Padre up until a, a few days ago, now a Marlin. So he will go as a Marlin. The Mets have three players. Chen misses. Still bidding for his first big league hit. You saw Cespedes in the starting lineup. Jury's familiar, who's been outstanding as their closer. And Noah Syndergaard. Those, for now, are the three Mets. And as I noted, Terry Collins is involved in the uh, manager selection. The league helps out each manager. And there's a possibility for every team and every snub that uh, a player will be added here or there up until uh, game time in San Diego, which is a week from tonight. And Matt strikes out Chen. Friday night, Marlins back home. Reds are waiting, and it's a fireworks Friday. Columbian Heritage Night, powered by South Florida Ford. You've got the Budweiser Burger and Beer Package for just 25 bucks. You've got fireworks going on right now. And a lot of them last night in and around New York. Here is Echavarria. Fastball up. The pitchers for the National League, Jake Arrieta, Madison Bumgarner, Johnny Cueto, Familia, Jose, Kenley Jansen made it, John Lester made it. Clayton Kershaw, Mark Melanson of the Pirates, of course, uh, Ramos and Rodney, Strasburg, Steven Strasburg is there, Syndergaard, and uh, for the Braves, Julio Tehran. So there, at this point, are seven Cubs on that team with Lester and Arietta joining those starters. The reserves for the National League, Jonathan Lucroy, Wilson Ramos are the catchers. Will Myers and Paul Goldschmidt at first. Daniel Murphy and Matt Carpenter at second. Nolan Arenado at third. Corey Seegers at short. Adam Duvall of the Reds. Carlos Gonzalez. Odubel Herrera. And of course, uh, Marcel Ozuna. Echevarria is out. Mats is on. And a 1 2 3 third.
These are pounding the strike zone right now. These are the American League starters just announced. You got some Red Sox on there, three of them. Jackie Bradley Jr., Xander Bogarts, and Mookie Betts. Mike Trout's in center. Some Royals, Salvador Perez, Eric Hosmer, Jose Altuve at second, Manny Machado at third base. South Florida being uh, represented quite well on that team. And of course, Big Poppy is the designated hitter. Here is Travis Darno. And if you follow the Mets, you recognize Darno, but you may not recognize that number. He gave up his number seven to Jose Reyes. And hits that one in the air to right. Stanton is under it. And he makes the catch. Way in Chen. 28 pitches. And just six balls. Steven Matz. 35 pitches. Just six balls. So lots of strikes. Look at that. Got to like that. Here comes Matz. The fact that the Marlins have four all stars, if you're just joining us, AJ Ramos, Jose Fernandez, Marcelo Zuna, and Fernando Rodney, which we kind of posed yesterday, and it was an emailer that uh, gave us that scenario. And so four Marlins make it. That's happened twice before in the two years following the last Marlins World Championship. 04, Armando Benitez, Miguel Cabrera, Mike Lowell, Carl Pavano, and 05, Miggy, Louis Castillo, Paul LaDuca, and Dontrell Willis. Matz, who's a pretty good hitter, swings and misses, and Chen stays on his run. Just a cesspitous single. The only thing the Mets have to show for tonight. Mets fans reviving that uh, Jose cheer. Johnson to first and Wei and Chen is rolling in New York tonight in a scoreless ball game.
who I found hanging outside of City Field. It's Mookie Wilson, the former Met and father to our own Preston Wilson. Mookie was beloved during his time in New York. He won a World Series title with the Mets back in 1986. He was also a Mets Hall of Fame inductee in 1996. He is still second in franchise history as far as stolen bases behind Jose Reyes. And Preston, I know he is the man that introduced you to the game of baseball for which you will be forever thankful for. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where I, I see him in that Mets uniform and he just brings back memories of me being a kid around Shea Stadium, uh, just following him around at the father, the father kid days at the stadium where all the kids got to play on the field. So to think that I went from playing on the father kid days at Shea Stadium with my dad then to be able to actually be a player in Shea Stadium as an actual major league player, that, that seems pretty surreal. Martin Prado off the end of the bat. Rolls it to first base side. Now, as your, I'm sure your father, when you were playing, would uh, give you encouragement when you needed it. Maybe a little bit of uh, dad uh, instruction now and then. As a broadcaster, how's that gone? What's, uh, what's <laughs> any good critiques? Uh, Pat's on the back. Does he watch the telecast, and, and do you get the same? Type of feedback from uh, playing days to broadcasting days. Oh yeah, it's, it's kind of funny because every now and then he'll call me up and go, "Hey, you know, I heard you guys did a good job last night." You know, then he'll like illustrate a play for me. He'll, he'll tell me something about a play. You know, hey, you know, you got to watch out when that guy goes to his left. Maybe there's an option to have that shortstop throw in the third. There's always something. There's at least one point that he picks out in a game that uh, it's it's always kind of a tutorial that I get from Dad, and I, I appreciate it. I like having. It. There's Christian Yelich and he takes outside. We've got emails and tweets. I mean, he's, I'm sorry, Richie. No, go ahead. He's the guy who's got me on this being so bent on outfield play, base running, you know, being so particular about those things. That call comes from him. Yelich, a high pop up. It's going to end up in the glove of his Drupal Cabrera. And so there are two outs and Marcelo Zuna. Comes up. I know if any of our faithful listeners can tell when there gets to be a little bit of strain in my voice, it happens when there's bad outfield play, poor base running, or something of that ilk. And that all comes from old number one over there in the Mets uniform. Ozuna struck out in the second. So good to see that uh, Ozuna in with the player vote. There was a tweet of trying to find the name wondering why the Marlins don't get as much uh, attention or love nationally when it comes to fan votes for the starting lineup and there uh, look there's a lot of factors one is a lack of attendance two is lack of national exposure the national television contracts of uh, ESPN of Fox spend a lot of time on certain teams and the Marlins are not one of those teams. And so there's a lot of people that don't know really who Marcelo Ozuna is haven't seen him play a whole lot. So for Ozuna to be voted in by the players that's a really nice tip of the cap AJ Ramos Jose Fernandez selected by the manager and the league. Change up from Matt's you saw Phil Cuzzy take a step back almost as if to ring him up. That's a close pitch and he just missed with it. He's been good all night. Steven Matz has. You know, and there's some years where guys really do get overlooked because of their geography. You know, the guys who put up good numbers, but maybe there aren't a perennial all star. They play on a smaller market team that doesn't get those uh, nationally televised games as often and they get overlooked. Hey Alex with a really good tweet saying that haven't you said that Yelich never pops up or rarely pops up on the infield he just did he just did now coming into this season he had done it once in his career and we'll have to get the crack staff trying to figure out if that's the only time he's done it this year I believe it is but good work by Alex part of our crack staff and it's a walk to Ozuna so far that's the tweet of the night from Alex. <laughs> Daniel also noticed that as well. So Daniel you get a, a tip of the cap as well. 
Marlins live on Friday. Remember no television tomorrow. It's the Reds and the fish in Miami and it's a Jose Fernandez start here's Stanton who singled the right his first time up and he swings and misses here. It's 0 and 1. Mats gets the corner. 0 and 2. That's a generous call. I'd say. Off and a little down. Fastball Stanton fouls it back. And it stays at 0 and 2. O2 coming. And it's in. And to finish the point about voting, the Marlins obviously have not been a contending team of late, so you're not going to fall into too many national television games when you're not contending. The hope is, is that if the fish can hang in there and be relevant in September, that attention might grow. And the other thing is, just look at all the Cubs that made it. So there's a lot of other teams that are scratching their heads saying, how come? There's uh, so many Cubs out there. Yeah, let's be honest. Daniel Murphy's not starting in the National League All-Star game. Uh, he's he's uh, coming off the bench. Stanton. There was a check, but there is no swing, and so he's run the count to two and two. That one pulled foul. Got him with a fastball, 94 miles an hour, elevated. And down goes Stanton, down go the Marlins in the fourth. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. And by Checkers, fast foodies know the deal. What a great shot in some of the aerials that we've had on Marlins Live and uh, earlier tonight have been just spectacular. Sun setting on Gotham. Wayne Chen. Fastball starts the at bat of Curtis Granderson. You want to Cespedes, Wilmer Flores, second time through for the Mets. Chen has been marvelous tonight. 
thirty five pitches. O two. And if you break it down seven balls twenty nine strikes. Well. Wow. Check swing and it's a swing. Says Jordan Baker. Great job of expanding the strike zone. That's what we talked about earlier in the game. Chen having that advantage of having one ball, two strikes. Don't throw a ball right there that can be hit. Make them chase. Make that hitter have to give in to you. Good job right there. That's actually Tom Hallion. My mistake. Hallion was not listed on the lineup sheet tonight. And we were told he'd been replaced by Jordan Baker. But uh, now that we get a look at him, that is Tom Hallion. That is crushed. Cespedes facing of the second deck. His 21st and the 17th that Chen has allowed this year. Wow. <laughs> yes, uh, AT&T high speed replay. Here's Wilmer Flores. So the long ball bites Chen and the Mets who have homered a ton a hundred and twelve times now get a home run here that's second in the National League as a team and Cespedes now at twenty one is three behind Chris Bryant. Flores lifts it to left. Yelich is over there and he makes the catch. It's an all-star Saturday. This Saturday at 4 o'clock start. First 5,000 fans get an Edgar Renteria all-star bobblehead courtesy of Leon Medical Centers. You get all you can eat seats for just 28 bucks. Marlins.com for tickets. What was it Joe Angel used to call him the uh, Barranquilla <laughs> baby. <laughs> yep. Now it's Drupal Cabrera he takes a strike. We had a note on the uh, Yelich stat to look at a Atlanta game in which he popped up to third but it was a foul ball. So infield pop up is an infield pop up on the infield and one that's foul apparently doesn't count in that stat. But good call by the crack staff just to double check it. Prado across the diamond catch and tag. Johnson had him and Cabrera is out. Yoenna Cespedes goes out way out and it's one nothing Mets.
sponsor of Miami Marlins baseball in New York where the Mets came back from behind and won yesterday eight to six and lead this one one nothing on the UNS Cespedes solo homer. Fifth inning arrives. Nice crowd lively bunch. And Chris Johnson takes a strike. Steven Matz has been locating all night a lot of balls on that outer edge and at the knees. Johnson takes a change up and on a hop Cabrera has it. And there's one out here in the fifth. All right, Preston, let's uh, sweep through emails and notes. Already. Marlon Maniac notes, and it's a good one. Fans uh, shouldn't complain too loudly about a history of Marlins not getting votes from fans as starters. There were two starters voted in last year, Giancarlo Stanton and D. Gordon. Fans do not get to vote on pitchers. Eric brings up the uh, the question that's worth uh, debating. Home field advantage in the World Series decided by the All Star Game. Rojas sends it Granderson's way. Preston, you were an All Star and a World Series champion. How do you feel? How do the players feel about that? I think it's one of those things that until you find a better alternative, I think you have to go with it. Uh, I was an all star uh, on the year when the National League was winning until the end and then uh, the American League came back uh, with the big comeback they had against uh, the, the National League at the very end. And it, it was it was tough to take because you realize that whoever made it to the World Series was not going to be able to have that game seven at home. Jeff Mathis lined out back in the third. Up the middle, Cabrera. Boy, Matt's dealing right now. 61 pitches through five. That's a six pitch hitting there. Halfway through in New York, Geico brings you a Marlins moment from 91. And that's when Major League Baseball unanimously, unanimously approved the Marlins and Rockies as baseball's newest franchises. I played for both of those teams, Rich. How about that? <laughs> and you have Geico as your uh, auto insurance, too. That's right. How about that? Uh, you know, just how it works. James, James Loney, Juan Ligaris, 
and Travis Darno, bottom five, and Wayne Chen on a hop. Rojas. Johnson is out. It didn't look that way. Now there's two things to look at. Did he beat the throw and did Johnson stay on the bag? Rojas did an admirable job of staying with it. Terry Collins is telling Phil Cuzzy they're looking at it and that will buy the Mets some time. Here's a look. And in these cases he's ooh. on the bag but I don't know if he got beat or not. Yeah it looks like he was on the bag. But whether he beat the ball or not. Back of glove. I think he beat it. Kids that's a great illustration is why when you pick up the ball off the ground you look at the ball you see Rojas had to go two or three times to pick up that ball because he was looking at the base instead of down at the baseball before he picked it up. Mets are not going to challenge this. The Mets are not going to challenge that play at first now. Obviously it has to be conclusive and clear to overturn it but it, was I wrong there in, in feeling like. You could see the ball come to the back of the glove clearly and it looked like the foot was already there. It was definitely worth another look I thought. So I'm right there with you partner. So you wonder if the Mets replay room was looking at was his foot on. All right here it is. Let's see if we can. When does the foot hit the foot hits. There. You know what it may. Hit. No it might be in there. You might have had it. Well, that's close man. I know CJ needs to tighten that webbing up a little bit. Look, that ball almost went through there. And you know what? If you're in the Mets replay room, that maybe is what determines whether or not to challenge it. I think he might be out. That's a great play by Johnson. Yeah, I think he might be that out. That is a great play by Johnson. It's bang, bang, and there's no way that they're going to overturn as you look at it now that we've seen, what, three angles. Right. So great play by Johnson. He saves uh, Rojas. And Chen, who is one and two on the Garis, who pops one into shallow left. And Chivari is out. Yelich calls him off. And you like to see that communication. T Mobile gives you greater coverage of baseball. Here we go around the league. Sandy Leon. Second four hit night in the Red Sox all over Texas. Martin Maldonado, that was that tight game against Washington, hit a fifth inning homer, and Jordan Zimmerman placed on the uh, disabled list with a neck strain. Well, Zimmerman, this year when he's been good, he's been awesome. When he's been bad, he's been just absolute awful. Giving up more home runs than he has in the past. It's one of those, one of those feast or famine years for Zimmerman. Still holds a nine and four record though. Tarno pulls it wide of third. Vicky from Indian Town, Florida, still steaming about the bunts yesterday. Why have those two hitters, Real Muto and Prado, bunt? Tom Hallion asking that question of Martin Prado. Prado says, hey, if I get the bunt down, Second and third and one out. Yeah, the question of Prado bunting wasn't uh, that bad to me. It was just how he bunted and where he bunted the baseball. You can't bunt that baseball to the quote unquote roving fielder, which is the first baseman. His only responsibility there is to feel the ball. You have to bunt that ball to the third baseman who has that dual responsibility of covering third base as well as fielding the bunt. And you have to make him come get that ball so that their base runner from second can go to third base. It was just a poor directional bunt. Bouncer third, Prado up on the first, and Chen has a one, two, three, fifth. One nothing, New York.
City Field where the Mets lead it one to nothing in the sixth inning. It is also a Twitter and email Tuesday driven by Ford. Keep those tweets and emails coming using tonight's special hashtag America's Pastime. Earlier on Twitter, we threw out the question, what do you love about the game of baseball? Here are some of the responses that I've seen. For Ricky, he says he loves the history of the game. Diana is all about the skill of baseball. She said that it is just as hard to throw a 100-mile-per-hour fastball as it is to hit it. And for Chris, he says that he appreciates that it is truly the definition of a team sport. Guys. All right, thank you, Jessica. Good emails and tweets tonight, uh, kids. The uh, wide ranging crack staff uh, chipping in nicely. Here is Wei In Chen, and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Now, Wei In Chen, as many know, has never had a hit in the big leagues. He's 0 for 39. He had two balls down the right field line that were just foul. Today is not looking like it's his day, Rich. This might be a bad matchup for him. And Chen says, My goodness, he's dotted the uh, corner with two breaking balls. What's a guy got to do to get a hit? What happened to professional courtesy? Jeez, that uh, was 94 and tied him up. All right, Roy has this email. Why is Real Muto not in the lineup? And of course, Real Muto's coming off uh, two terrific games. The Fort Bragg game in which he homered and had two hits in his uh, last two at-bats. Actually, three hits in his last three at-bats there. And then a four-hit game yesterday with a walk. And the answer is actually pretty simple. Here's Echeverria. Change up, and he pops that up. And Matz has thrown four pitches and has two outs. Don Mattingly, the Marlins have a day game after a night game, and so you're going to get a Jeff Mathis game in one of those two. And Mathis felt with the lefty, or uh, Mattingly felt with the lefty on the mound that Mathis tonight and Real Muto tomorrow. Was a better matchup. Real Muto hits righties well. It's DeGrom tomorrow night. So he felt, look, if, you, if you're going to have Real Muto out of one of the two games, which one would you rather have him out of? And that one falls as tonight. Thanks for playing, Roy, though. Breaking ball is a strike. Breaking ball is a strike. We have a, uh, a variety of questions asking why the game isn't on television tomorrow. It's one of the, I want to say, 10 Marlin games that's not scheduled for Fox Sports Florida this year. And there's usually 10 that uh, don't make it on Fox Sports Florida. Of those 10, a couple of them end up as national telecasts on a Saturday of Fox and FS1 or just like Sunday's game against the Braves. Prado up the middle. That's a base hit, a loud one. And the Marlins have their first hit since the second inning. Well, they needed that. They needed to get something going. Matz was just mowing them down one after the other. Nothing really getting going. Not even really hitting the ball hard. And uh, needed to get that to kind of give a little bit of belief back in that dugout. Hey, we can get something done here. He has been. Efficient and effective. Prado now hits the hundred mark. Daniel Murphy, the former Met, leading at 108. Now Yelich, who bounced out and yes, popped out on the infield, right behind the mound, for what we think is only the second time in his career in fair territory. That's an astonishing stat. It really is. Yeah, I mean, so much so that even just saying he's done it twice in his career. Yes, yes. Is astonishing. Yelich. Flores knocks it down and gets the out. And Steven Matz. Six innings of shutout ball, a one nothing Mets lead.
Fan Express brings your group to a game in style. Round trip transportation to Marlins Park, 30 or 50 people in a motor coach starting at just $40 per person. Book the Marlins Express today, 877 Marlins, or email groups at marlins.com. In New York tonight, both lefties are working quickly. Both have been effective. Wei Yin Chen would like one pitch back, and that's the one that Yuena Cespedes blasted off the facing of the second deck in left field. And this is Matz, who struck out his first time up. Yeah, they, both of these pitchers are wasting no time getting the ball, getting on the rubber, and delivering strikes all night long. 0 oh, 2. High fastball. Another strikeout. His fourth. The all new Rav 4 brings you this Toyota inside look. The resume of Jose Reyes, four time All Star, nine years of Met, a Marlin for 2012. 52 game suspension for a violation of Major League Baseball's domestic abuse policy. And his 0 for 2, he has struck out and bounced out. With David Wright out, Reyes certainly is a link to uh, another generation of Mets. Last year, 2011, that 2016 that came so close to a World Series. Beaten by the Cardinals. And Reyes swings and misses. It's got to be a very emotional day for him to come back here after sitting out all year to be able to come back someplace where he feels like he's accepted after what's happened. Rojas. And he makes the catch. Legally, we have to say this, but I'll say it real fast. This copyright telecast presented by the Thor of the Marlins may not be reproduced, retransmitted, and foreign account subscription. The game may not be disseminated with an express written to the Marlins. How's that? VIN number. That was well done, my friend. Thank you. 16 of 19 first pitch strikes. I had to, I had to read the disclaimer, much like Wayne Chen and Steven Matz have pitched in this game. Which is quickly and effectively would that would that be where we're going here rapidly <laughs> and with good location too, right uh, <laughs> hitting between two batters right on the black. Granderson swings and a foul tip. You know, both of these guys are pitching like they're double parked outside the stadium right now. Granderson lifts it up. Well, with Reyes arriving, Granderson obviously slides out of that leadoff spot. He's hit second and he's hit leadoff, mostly leadoff. He doesn't profile as a leadoff guy in terms of getting on base and stealing bases, but he's had great power 15 homers, 12 doubles. And so maybe moving him down in the lineup helps uh, the Mets' offense. But as we noted earlier, when the Mets decided to uh, go after Reyes they thought they needed a spark of uh, some emotion and energy and offense and they seem to have found those things before Reyes showed up. Perfect pitch outside corner Chen dots the outside part for his fifth strikeout and the lefties are filling up the strike zone tonight.
Cespedes with a solo homer, and that's it for tonight. Sunday, it's Marlins and Reds, a 110 star. The Pepsi 4 for 74 pack is in play. It's a great deal there, and kids get a Marlins wristband courtesy of Avianca Airlines. You can run the bases in the Diamond Dash after the game, Marlins.com, for tickets. Marcel Ozuna named to the National League All-Star team along with three other Marlins tonight. Jose Fernandez, A.J. Ramos, and Fernando Rodney. One of our uh, crack staff, I think he's Fort Lauderdale Bureau. Jim emailed us that possibility uh, the other day saying, hey, what happens if Rodney gets named? Heads up. Great heads up call by Jim. Ozuna rips that one to left and it's in for a hit. Cespedes picks it up. And the Marlins have just their fourth hit, a leadoff single to start this seventh inning. Matt struck Ozuna out on a breaking ball down and in before, and he does a great job getting to that pitch. Good job, Ozuna. Well done. Now Stanton who's one for two. And Matt's pours across a strike. Stanton in conversation with Phil Cousin. Fouls that one into the seats. Yeah pitch number one was the one that Stanton was questioning. Close. The way Matt's has pitched, the way Chen has pitched, they, you know, it, if you're that good in terms of control, you'll get calls. I mean, you'll get the benefit of the doubt if you're around the plate as consistently as these guys. And their ball strike ratios, both these guys, is just nuts tonight. Yeah, they're, they're both on a great pace. They both have great command. Look at that. Yeah. Fastball up. We've had a few questions with this topic. Jeremy wants to know do you think Don Mattingly will try to get Ichiro his 3,000th hit at home? And my answer to that is I don't think Don Mattingly would even consider anything like that. I mean, I, I think he's just trying to win games. Right. If he can use Ichiro in a spot start or in a pinch hit to win a game or compete, that's the first order of business. I don't think Don Mattingly. Gives a rip whether it's at home or on the road. Can I yeah. can I use that? Give a rip. Yeah, you can. All right, thank you. Stanton drives it left center field and deep and gone. A missile to left, and Miami wow. has the lead. Stanton homers against Mats, and it's 2-1. And that ball kept rising and rising and disappeared into the crowd. And a <laughs> smile from Stanton as he gets to the plate, and that's got to feel good. Good mercy. That ball looked like a two iron. Look at this thing get up. It's hit off the bat and you see the center fielder take basically two steps and just says, you know what, I'm just going to watch it like everybody else because I got no chance. Oh my goodness, that thing was hit hard. It didn't sound great off the bat and you thought maybe it would die in the gap, but it, it never died. <laughs> Yeah, it died, it, the, the, where it died was in the gap in the parking lot out there almost. That's where it was going to die. Good mercy, that ball was hit hard. And that's the difference between hit all those singles and when you get a guy that can hit for power, you could change the game with one swing instead of it taking three or four base hits to score two runs. Now, get on the board with a single and a home run, boom, now you're winning the game. A lot of national riders here talking to a Don Mattingly talking to Marlins and uh, I heard two or three observa uh, two or three observations about the fact that you know the Marlins are 43 and 40 and they note no D Gordon and for the last month or so not uh, any major contributions from John Carlos Stan. And they're absolutely right. Well a big contribution here a two run homer and Johnson takes up. 
because you take D Gordon off this Marlins team and they're basically a station to station baseball team. They don't steal bases. They don't have a whole lot of great team speed. By the way 115 miles an hour off the bat 436 feet. Before that ball came to rest. And for Stanton his 16th homer of the season. Well he loves coming here. What is that his 14th home run. Yeah and you, you know like we like we said earlier you see little steps. It's not all of a sudden he busts out and he's red hot. But little by little you can see him start to put together better at bats. More consistent contact. He's not lighting the world on fire, but he's not where he was three weeks ago. Correct. Well, sometimes it's those little cheap hits that get you going. You have to get some of those bad hits, a little bloop singles, little bleeders that get through the infield. Johnson swings and misses. And the other thing, Preston, we talked about his batting practice today when he had his first hit, which was a ground ball against the shift into right field. His batting practice today was exclusively right field driven. And when you talk to a hitting coach and I'm talking to a, a very good major league hitter right now. When you're focused on right field and you get a pitch like that. You hit it a long way and you generally hit it to center or to left center. Well when you're good, thinking about right field the thing that happens is you let the ball get closer to you the ball gets closer to the back of the strike zone and your body works together your lower half and your upper body tends to be more in sync when you hit the ball the other way. Rojas trying to get creative lonely uh, lonely lonely no more picks it up and steps on the bag. And so two outs and here comes Jeff Mathis. Richard wants to know why is Fernando Rodney allowed to wear his hat sideways. <laughs> it's just the way he wears it. There's a few other guys that uh, that yeah. wear it sideways. Cece Zabathia right? wears his a little bit off center. Most it's, usually it's left handers. Every now and then it's usually a right hander who does it. Usually it's a left hander whose hat is a little off center. There's Mathis with a hit to left. Now Mathis with a base hit there's two outs and it's the seventh but the Marlins are going to stick with Wei in Chen who comes up having struck out twice even though he is 0 for 40 they want and there's a couple reasons that he's hitting here. They'd like Chen to pitch another inning he's pitching well and the bullpen has been used and there's two or three guys that Don Manning would like to stay away from. And the bench is a little short tonight. You don't have Justin Bohr, so there's an extra player on that bench that you don't have that, you know, the, the use of. Plus, he's at 68 pitches. That one foul back. All right, bullpen usage. Now, remember as well. The Marlins on Sunday night worked late with the bullpen. Bearclaw, Phelps, and Rodney last night against the Mets each gave up two runs. And as you pointed out, each had a lot of pitches thrown, including Phelps at 36. Oh, and two. We've also had a, a couple of tweets about Chen wanting to know if he's a switch hitter or not. He was a, a left handed hitter and had no luck there. So he started to hit right handed and actually is a has a better swing and has more contact from this side of the plate. And he was on that breaking ball. Sort of. <laughs> I'm not saying he hit it but he was on it. I mean that's a good attempt he stayed on it two strikes he's protecting. It's a good take press That's a good take for a guy who's 0 for 40 for 0 for life. That's a good take. <laughs> it's one and two. 
I want it really badly for him. I do. And Matz is figuring I, I can blow a heater by him, and he's missed twice. It's two and two. Oh, press. He's chewing up pitch count. This is a look at the. <laughs> the the dugout. Marlins dugout <laughs> loves the at bat. This is a eight pitch at bat coming up for Chen. This may be the deepest at bat of his life. I like the little frustration after he fouled it off. Like, man, I can't believe I didn't hit that. Ow. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> they love it. Kohler, Nicolino, Conley. Well, now he's going through all. He's like, all right, keep your front side in. Oh, he's feeling it now. He's feeling this at bat now. Remember, Mathis is at first. 2-2 two -two coming. Can't throw a 94-mile-an-hour fastball by way in. Chen, even Yelich is in on it now. <laughs> Look at the dugout. <laughs> Breaking ball. Well, that ends the seventh, but the Marlins take the lead. Sean Carlos Stanton, 436 feet on a line. It's 2 1. Yourself Colin Cowherd, Jason Whitlock, the Braves to know, the guts to say, catch Colin and Jason as they team up for FS1's new daily sports talk show, Speak for Yourself, weeknights at 6 Eastern. My old color partner from Triple A Baseball, Colin Cowherd <laughs> in Las Vegas. Back when the herd was uh, lighting up Las Vegas as a sports anchor, he used to pop his uh, head in and Entertain. GMC brings you the big matchup. Yoannis Cespedes versus the Marlins this year. Cespedes has been big and he's hot right now. Cespedes, in his last five plate appearances, has gone single, double, double, single, homer. So the big bats have both gone boom for the Mets and the Marlins. Cespedes a homer in the fourth and Stanton a two run homer. Emails and tweets tonight good ones. Thanks for uh, participating kids. Andy wonders after that the last at bat will Chen get his first hit before Ichiro gets his 3000. Wow. See now if you were in Vegas I wonder if you could get I guarantee you that's out there somewhere. Put some money on that. That's out there somewhere. We thank uh, Ford for driving our Twitter and email Tuesday tonight. Cespedes Flores Cabrera now did the epic battle for Chen take any gas out of the tank at 68 pitches 
Six innings. Just two hits and they both belong to this guy. How do you if you're Chen. Mix it up and get Cespedes off your fastball. So you have to be able to throw something else for strikes. You know the best way to get a guy off a pitch is to be able to make him respect another pitch in the strike zone. One ball one strike. Cespedes including yesterday. is five for seven. In the series we talked about the last five at bats. Check swing. No swing. Andrew wants to know what's the deal with Carter Capps. Carter Capps had Tommy John surgery and his recovery is going well. So that's the deal. Marlins look forward to having him. In 2017 in their bullpen. Zaspidis swings and misses. So he's been able to get him off of the fastball. And get to a two and two count. Neither of these lefties look like guys that haven't won much lately. And we pointed it out at the outset of the telecast. Chen got a win on June 13th. Before then, his last win was the 11th of May. So just one win in that span. Cespedes pops it into the seats. Very and Matt's, for all the things that he's accomplished, Matt's last win was the 25th of May. He's been good. Chen's been a little better. Yeah, you also have to have some things go your way. You can't just be good. You have to have your team score runs for you. Uh, on those particular days when you're good, it's there's a lot of factors that goes into getting wins as a pitcher. Three two. It's in. It's Cespedes walks. And up comes Wilmer Flores. Yeah, we saw some good fastballs in that at bat from Chen. We saw 93, 94. Well, it all belongs to Cespedes. A single, a homer, and a walk. So Cespedes is the only Met to get on base in this ball game. And here's Flores, who has flied to right and flied to left. A strike. J.D. in a tweet points out for the fan that was not all on board with Fernando Rodney's hat being crooked that Dontrell Willis had his cap to the side somewhat not as dramatic but there aren't too many Marlins that are as beloved as Dontrell Willis. This is true. And I mean let's let's be honest when you when you're talking about all the things a guy could possibly be doing these days when we're talking about his hat. We're kind of nitpicking a little bit. You know, this guy's been a great guy his whole career. He hasn't gotten been in trouble in any clubhouses. You don't hear his name in the news. I think we're starting to kind of dick for things when we start talking about guys' uniforms now. Pitch is in. I was in Seattle when Ken Griffey Jr. got to the big leagues. Oh my goodness. What and, a... and when he wore his cap backwards during batting practice, there yeah, was not during the game. Outrage. Just during batting practice. There was out of Buck Showalter. They were calling him a, a punk, a thug, like all like really just He's disrespecting the game, and then when you look at Ken Griffey Jr., who plays harder? Who played harder? Who is a better ambassador for the game than Ken Griffey Jr.? Nobody. You know, I think we have to be careful of these antiquated notions that we have of what's good or bad when it comes to society and baseball as a whole. I don't, let's be careful how we're judging people or what we want to make out of people because of the presentation and not looking at that whole person. Wilmer Flores at the plate. Ball and a strike. Cespedes at first. Ozuna and Stanton. And Stanton has the angle and the ball. I know a lot of guys that wear their uniform perfectly, and I don't want them nowhere around me or a baseball. 
Miguel wants to know, does Chen take BP? Yeah, the pitchers hit. <laughs> and, and not only, you know, the day before their start, but uh, every night the pitchers have a, uh, in the National League, the pitchers have their own little group. They'll hit in the cage before they go out and shag. So, yeah, Chen, uh, and it looked to me, Preston, and I think that at bat was a good example. It looks like he's making progress. Oh, he's a lot closer. He's a lot closer than he was at the beginning of the year. And you have to give him credit. He hasn't really hit much in his whole life. So when you talk about a guy who's getting a chance to start hitting again, he's got to do it at the major league level. I put it like this. I haven't hit in a few years. And if they tell me to go out there right now and start facing major league pitching, it's probably going to take me 20, 30 at bats, 40 at bats before I make a you know decent contact or get a hit. An email from Lifeline. Two questions. One of the Marlins going to wear their blue jerseys. <laughs> By the way, they look awesome. Second, when are you guys going to put a a POV camera on Real Muto or Mathis. Well, uh, believe me when I tell you this, at Fox Sports Florida, we are as progressive as any major league uh, television entity at the regional level in getting access and both sound and video from players, managers, coaches. In the air, Cabrera pops it up. Echeverria calling. And he makes the catch. I think a GoPro on a major league catcher might be a little much. And remember, they tried that with umpires for a while. But we'll keep pushing the envelope. An email from Irvin, currently serving in Hawaii, member of the U.S. Army. Love the Fort Bragg game, an amazing game. Always would be very memorable to me, especially being a Marlins fan. Hopefully Major League Baseball can plan future games at other military installations. Aloha from Hawaii and Mahalo. Nice, Rich. I've worked on that, Preston. I had the University of Hawaii in a college football game and long ago for one season I was the mainland radio play by play voice of the uh, Hawaii basketball team. I played in the Hawaii Winter League. I'm actually an honorary Maui citizen. Rich. <laughs> hey, I got a certificate to prove it. Hey. James Loney takes out. Played for the Maui Stingrays back in the day. Mets bullpen. That's Ricky Bonus, our good hey. friend in the middle. Ricky Bowens. Of Goodell. And Addison Reed, who's been very effective for the Mets, especially against the Marlins. Loney has bounced out twice. Soft serve into left field. Yelich collects it. Mets have their first non cespedes hit. And here comes Juan Lagares. Mathis out in front of the plate looking into the dugout. And Lagares gets ready to climb in as Wei in Chen tries to push through the seventh inning. This is down low. Lagaris bounced out, flyed out, and Chen very good in this spot, and that's with runners in scoring position. Fourth best in all of baseball. Just a 182 average. Mm. 
One and one. It's been a fun game to watch, watching these two lefties go. Lots of strikes, very aggressive in the strike zone, but making pitches when they have to. Ball and a strike. To right, Stanton in. Sliding catch and right by Giancarlo. He makes that play as well as any right fielder. That sliding catch on a liner that he has to charge. Going back to his wide receiver days. Nice. And it's 2 1 Miami. Dell and he arrives for the Mets and so Steven Matz is the first lefty out you see Goodell's numbers a nice ERA and he worked yesterday he got one hitter when the Marlins knocked around Matt Harvey and put six runs up early the Mets bullpen came in and as much as the Marlins pen struggled and they did Bearclaw, Phelps, and Rodney gave up two runs each. The Mets bullpen was terrific, holding the Marlins scoreless from that fourth inning all the way through the ninth. Top of the order, Danny Echevarria, Martin Prado, and Christian Yelich. But that's going to be an interesting play to see if Jose Reyes can make that, that barehanded charging play on a base hit bunt. Uh, so uh, did, uh, Danny Echevarria try to square around just now. I think that's a good test for him. In reading articles about Reyes in third base, the concerns that some baseball evaluators have is his reaction time. And at third base, it, as opposed to shortstop, it's a big change. And remember when Reyes became a Marlin, Hanley Ramirez went from shortstop to third. Now, part of that was Hanley's diminished skills as a shortstop, and it's continued as his career has gone on. It's not an easy it's not as easy a transition I think as, as some people feel it is. This is the best description I've ever gotten. That's a catch by Cabrera and a line drive out for Echeverria. Of the ball at third between the difference between the ball at shortstop and third base. It's shortstop you play the ball you get to pick your hop. You get to choose the angle at third base the ball plays you. You basically have time to make one decision whether you're going to be in front of it or not. You make that play and then you get your throw. Steven Matt seven innings six hits two runs a walk and six strikeouts. 
Prado singled off of Matz on a one for three night. Giancarlo Stanton two run homer. You win a Cespedes solo shot. And that's where Miami and New York stand here in the eighth. And Goodell misses out. Of course, the, uh, the backdrop to this game is last night in which the Marlins bullpen, which has been very good up until the last uh, few times out, really faltered and gave up six runs. Prado sends it to center. And Ligaris is there to make the catch. Let's check in with Jessica Boyla. Jess? Hey, Rich. Joanna Cespedes caught the attention of everyone during spring training, but it wasn't because of what he was doing on the field. It's because he showed up every day in a different vehicle. Take a look at some of these cars. These are not just regular cars. Look how fancy those are. As far as his personal collection, this one is his favorite, his Jeep Wrangler. It is valued at $80 thousand dollars he has six cars in his personal collection his entire collection guys it's worth a million here is Yelich so and Yelich gets hit by a breaking ball which if you're going to get hit you want it to be a breaking ball and he's aboard so if he has six that means he borrowed some of the cars he showed up in and didn't yeah. he show up at one point on a horse with Noah <laughs> Syndic wasn't he in Syndergaard uh, <laughs> but then they come uh, galloping in <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That that's when you know you jumped the shark, Ben. <laughs> when, when you when you come to the ballpark on a horse, that's enough. You've done it. You won. You you won. You gotten all the attention possible. Twenty nine thousand four hundred and seventy seven in attendance tonight. Thirty thousand yesterday on the fourth of July. And here's Ozuna celebrating an All Star appearance. Player vote. Ozuna on the team. Three other Marlins. Now, Rich, you've helicoptered in, haven't you? To the ballpark? No. Seven train is about as uh, fancy as I get. But we can't all be like Jeff Conine and nuclear sub our way to the ballpark, you know? That's true. He, that he has a unique uh, penchant for that. AJ Ramos, Jose Fernandez, and Fernando Rodney, also all stars named tonight. That's end of the bat, and it just. Mm -hmm. Spins foul and it's 0 2. So richly deserved for Ozuna. Nice to see that the players took notice. Fernando Rodney is up. And for him, it'll be nice to appear in San Diego where he pitched so well this year and obviously earned that all star bid as a Padre. And the Marlins hope that uh, he continues the good work. Wearing a Marlins uniform. We did have an email, and I, I apologize, I don't have your name because it's hard to shuffle through all of them, especially when you see one. We had an emailer want to know what would have happened had Rodney been traded to an American League team and been named to the National League ball club because he was voted in by the players, which means they couldn't keep him out. I think, I mean, what happens then? I have no idea. That, that's one uh, someone smarter than me would have to know the answer to, Rich. It has to have happened before, right? One would think. Yeah, let's run it first. 0 2 coming to Ozuna. It's in the dirt, which would further the absurdity of the winning team gaining home field advantage in the World Series if a player in one league has an all-star season and then ends up playing for the other league in the all-star game. Yeah. We're thinking Jeff Samarja may have done that. It's possible. But our crack staff is researching right now. One, two. And no doubt our crack staff out on Twitter is hope, hopefully helping us out. Went from the Cubs to Oakland. There were six athletics who were picked. Samarja was picked as a National League All-Star. 
and Major League Baseball wouldn't let him play. Okay, that makes sense. That bites. Yeah. <laughs> but he couldn't play. He was introduced as okay. a, a National League player, but couldn't play. Okay. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> right, Preston? I hear you. I, I mean, if the man's earned it, let him play. Let the kids play. Good at bat here by Ozuna. 2 2 from Goodell is out. And it's 3 and 2. And if you're looking for the, the, the key to Marcelo Ozuna's trip to San Diego, it has been his discipline. I asked him about a month and a half in, what was it, what is it that Barry Bonds has taught him? And in one word, he said, patience. Yep. Let's see what he gets 3 and 2. Two outs, Yelich on the move, and Ozuna sends it into left field. That's a hit. It's his second of the night on a two for three night, and it gives Stanton an at bat with two runners on. Great at bat here. Just waits him out. Ends up getting something he can handle. Drives it in the left. He was behind the count 0 and 2, and remember, Yelich got hit by a pitch. After Goodell had the first two outs of this eighth inning. And so here's Stanton. Singled in the second struck out in the fourth two run homer in the seventh. And let's see if he's still thinking right field. Not with a fastball in he's now. It's one and oh. The Mets are not shifted as aggressively as they were against Stanton. Even though Flores, the second baseman, is behind second, not directly so. Good speed with Yelich at second. Ozuna, the trail runner at first. And that's Good out. Take. Good take. That's a ball. And that pitch is in the dirt. This is the seventh inning homer against Steven Matz. Like maybe a breaking ball back to a breaking ball that just came in there and he met it. That ball was gone in a hurry. 115 miles an hour, 436 feet. 3 0 pitch. Let's see if it's a pitch to hit and let's see if he goes after it. He did, and he missed it, and it's into the seats. It's three and one. Yelich, Ozuna at second and at first. 3 1 to Stanton. Oh, Left field, wow. way, way out of here. Three run shot. And the big fella is swinging it now. <laughs> wow. Upper tank. One fish. What a difference he makes to this offense. Well, Stan has one of the longest homers hit in City Field's young history. And there was no question, Eric Goodell knew he had given up a long one. It was just a matter of how far up it was going to actually hit. Here is Johnson. Now this one might not be as far 
because on StatCast it takes into consideration angle and speed. This was a high towering one that was coming down. Uh, I still I got no problem with it. That ball is hit well. That's a home run. The Marlins needed it. He needed it. And it gives his bullpen an extra little breathing room if they do happen to go to this bullpen uh, with Rodney down there warming up. Man. 424 feet, 108 miles an hour. Mere child's play. Yeah. For Stanton. I think he was at 465 on that homer that wet night back uh, four or five years ago that ended up up and beyond the uh, apple. Yeah. In center field on the right side of it. Yeah, that was ridiculous. That's. Two and one to Johnson. And remember, it all started with two outs on a breaking ball that got away that hit Yelich in the leg. 0 2 on Ozuna. He fights back, singles to left, and that buys in at bat for Stanton now. And now ties Ozuna for the team lead at 17. Stanton has driven in all five runs tonight. Johnson whacks it to right sliding catch there by Granderson and he holds on to run homer in the seventh and then this a three run towering majestic shot it's five one. And we said earlier it feels like little by little three steps forward maybe a couple steps back and uh, tonight two giant leaps forward and the line drive homer against Matts, who was untouchable for the rest of the team and then once the Marlins got to the bullpen they put a couple on and Stanton blasts one out against Eric Goodell so two homers tonight and now it's Fernando Rodney and the Marlins bullpen who would love to redeem themselves not only for last night but to the last few ball games last six games the Marlins pen has given up 17 earned runs in 23 innings. Everybody goes through it the Marlins pen a strength throughout the year so Rodney climbs up on the hill. An all star. Travis Darno pitcher spot Jose Reyes. Rodney with that fastball and the changeup misses for ball one. Darno has flied out and bounced out. He singled against Rodney to open up the eighth inning, an ill fated eighth inning last night. 
Rodney gave up two. And the Mets won the ball game 8 6. And the Cespedes at bat was the big one. The two out, two run double. It's a tradition on email and Twitter Tuesday. We started this, I think, back in 2006, before Twitter, when it was just emails. And uh, every night we do get we get emails and tweets of all nature, but we get angry ones. And on uh, just about every night we try to pick out our angry emailer of the night. We used to give an award. <laughs> it used to be a frowning emoticon. And. We have our angry email tonight. All right, let's hear it. Well, not yet. Two and two. Oh, I'm excited. I, I, that's that's part of the angry email's charm is uh, the anticipation. Chopper, Rodney has it and flips to first. And Johnson kept his foot on the bag. All right, here it is, Preston. This is from Michael. Michael, thanks for joining the show. Angry or not, we welcome all emails. I blame you, the announcers and the Marlins organization for not promoting JT Real Muto to be the all-star catcher. And if they don't get any national exposure, the Marlins, it's our job down here to promote them. And you don't promote them enough, apparently, is the word from Michael. Okay. I'll politely disagree. I will uh, point out the many times I've talked about the season Real Muto is having brought him into the discussion of National League catchers. The many visiting broadcasters that I remind before each series that this guy led all of baseball in pop time from uh, his glove to glove at second as far as throwing for catchers. What he's done to right. Stanton, back, track, wall, and Alejandro De Aza goes deep. Wow. And the Mets have their second run. They are both solo homers. De Aza, a pinch hit job. Change up, just stayed up, didn't quite get down. Deaza got to give him credit. He put a really good swing on that ball. Now Reyes, who flips around from the left side. Reyes 0 for 3 and has returned to the Mets tonight. Busted back, got a hurry, edge to first in the dirt, and Johnson digs it out. Chris Johnson helping out a Danny Echevarria, and that's out number two here in the eighth inning. Let's finish the real Muto angry email. Look, Michael, I spent a lot of time talking to other broadcasters, other writers, talking about Marlins players, and I sing the praises of real Muto and all the Marlins players. But I appreciate your participation. If we had an angry email T-shirt we could sell you or send you, not sell you, but send you, we would. So thanks for playing along with us tonight. And, and to go along with that, Buster Posey, who's the starter, Jonathan Lucroy, who's the reserve, and Wilson Ramos, as much as we love our guy, they're having better seasons uh, overall offensively. Uh, they don't have the pop times or maybe not the, the stolen base percentage that uh, Real Muto has, but those guys are having good years too. Every team needs a guy. Everybody needs a guy, right? Especially Every, here in New York. Uh, you got to have a guy. You got a guy. Yeah. And so I believe Luke Croy is the only brewer, right? Yes, I believe he is. Change up misses out. Who's the only Padre on that list? We had an emailer asking. Will Myers. Will Myers. Yes. It would have been Rodney. Yes. Well, it was good for Will Myers. He's the ambassador for the, for the Padres. And, for the uh, and that puts him in the home run hitting contest. That's a nice, easy slide in there. Yes. He, you know, they've massaged the rules where he could have appeared, but now I think that's a slam dunk. Yes. 3-0 pitch. 
Fastball for a strike. Granderson up right now. We've seen some really good fastballs from Fernando Rodney these last couple of days. Hit 98 yesterday, 97 tonight. Velocity's not an issue. Location is right now, though. And of course, it's a walk in front of who else but Cespedes. Cespedes, who walked in the seventh, homered in the fourth, singled in the first. And that comes off a, a night last night where he had three hits. In his last three at bats, two doubles, a single, and of course the two run double last night decided the game. Eighty two mile an hour changeup. Another change up. This one at 85. That is such a disparity from 97, which was that last fastball he threw. To dial it down to 82. Yeah, I, I face Fernando Rodney, and it's not a comfortable at bat trying to pick out that fastball and change up. Cespedes, watch that change up. Now, you noted last night just before. He got a pitch on the outside part and blasted it to right center for the two run double. That if you do throw fastballs to Cespedes, it's wise to keep them up and in. Yes, he likes the ball down if it's in. Want to get it around thigh high, in or higher. That one sinks low and it's two and two. Miami's bullpen is active right now. Rodney in trying to get through the eighth. He's given up a pinch hit homer. By former Marlin Alejandro de Aza of long ago. Two two. Busted bat off of Rodney's glove. Rojas has it and he tags Granderson out and a wise decision because Cespedes would have beaten the throw to first a run but still a 5 2 lead. Justin Nicolino and a reminder that the game is not televised here on Fox Sports Florida. It's one of the 10 games we do not have of 162. We do 152 this year. And a few of those uh, actually appeared on Sun a few more will appear on Sun Sports the Rays Marlins games and then of course you've got national games but this is one that you can uh, I guess on MLB.tv you probably can pull in the uh, Mets telecasts. Gary Cohen and Ron Darling, I believe. And you might even see Antonio Bastardo, who comes in for the Mets. And there is Bastardo, the lefty.
he handles the ninth. And it's Rojas and Mathis. And then the pitcher spot. And Bastardo with a fastball for a strike. AJ Ramos. Getting a warm up down there. Ramos named to the National League All Star team today as well. Rojas into left center and no one playing there. Over to cut it off Ligaris. Big turn. And he'll hold with a single. Good job by Ligaris. I thought that ball was a double off the bat. Mentioned earlier in the game how Rojas has done very well against left handed pitching this year. Hits that ball in the gap. Look at the great angle by Ligaris. Cuts it off, gets it in quickly. Strong, accurate throw. Rojas has to hold to a single on that ball. I remember when Ligaris was getting more regular time in 2014, he won a gold glove out there. Well, his defense is not the reason why he's not playing as much. It's just Cespedes' bat that came here that took some of his playing time away. Well, and his bat, too, did not have a great 2015. You've got Mathis up. Gillespie is on deck. Terry Collins hoping to get through this inning with Bestardo. I know I didn't say it with as, as much gusto. Really. I know I, I missed it. Man. That one fouled at the plate. And the count to Mathis is 0 and 1. Jeff's lined out, bounced out, and singled. And Mathis with a terrific bunt. Mets get the out, and here comes Gillespie. That is a very nice bunt on Mathis. Great direction, good speed, didn't pop it up. Base runner very easily got to second base on that. Well done, young man. See that bat out in front. Nicely done. So Gillespie gets the at bat. Runner goes. Big jump. Throw down to third and a stolen base. Now that's a good steal at third. One out. Go early in the count. That's when you want to steal third. Oh, what a jump he had, too. Oh. There's a walking lead and then there's a running lead. That was a running lead. Yeah. So now the, the whole at bat changes for Gillespie. The infield comes in, counts 0 and 1, and a chance to pick up some insurance in the ninth. It's also it's going to make a difference of whether Ramos gets a save opportunity or not. As we see Whitgren down there warming up alongside him. Bastardo misses in. And it's two and one to the former Oregon State Beaver. First career stolen base of third for Miguel Rojas. Well, he did it like he's done it more than that. Gillespie fouls it back.
Two and two. Good swings by Cole Gillespie. Get some balls in the middle of the plate. Take some pretty good swings at him. And Danny Echevarria is on deck. There's one out on a night where Giancarlo Stans hit two homers. Marlins bullpen, which has wobbled a bit over the last uh, week, will try to uh, finish the night. Cole Gillespie can add an insurance run here with the drawn in infield and a 2 2 count. Full count three and two. count got him fastball and Gillespie goes down and it's up to Echeverria number one live streaming sports service is MLB.tv premium every out of market game live in HD over 400 supported devices MLB.tv premium Includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, number one app for live baseball. Blackout, other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Echeverria now, the infield back. And Bastardo throws a strike. An 0 for 4 night for Echeverria. And expect Dietrich back in there against DeGrom. Oh, and 2. Fastball from Bastardo finishes Echeverria's at bats. AJ Ramos, a new All Star, coming in to close tonight.
unexplored is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency look fares nothing to hide. By Dodge, visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. And by your South Florida Honda dealers. 5-2. Marlins on top of the Mets. Some old school jerseys. And A.J. Ramos arrives. And for Ramos, what an honor for the right-hander out of Lubbock, Texas. A Red Raider of Texas Tech. A National League All-Star. 24 of 25 in save situations. And of course, uh, the scar of that uh, blown save still weighs on him. That was the Tyler Flowers home run on Friday in Atlanta. The Marlins would win that game 7 to 5, and he opens his ninth inning with a slow breaking ball for a strike. He's got Wilmer Flores, as Dribble Cabrera, and James Loney. Another breaking ball, another strike. the catch and there's one out here in the night oh nice route by Ozuna on this ball this is an 0 2 pitch that Ramos would like to have back he can't get this up 0 2 ball right there but Ozuna does a great job tracking it down it's a great jump on it it's a great angle right in stride <laughs> that reaction says it all Nice. Got away with one right there. Preston, we do have one more email to read. I think this one is for you. Okay. Lay it on me in a minute. Boy, Ramos. Featuring the breaking ball here. Cabrera, the switch hitting shortstop, is 0 for 3. Pitch is in. It's 2 and 1. Ball left field, and Yelich is there, and he makes the catch. All right, Preston, last email. This one I think is for you. I am uh, Sam Dasuk Jr., the son of Private Dasuk, who was the security advisor for the former president of Malaysia, and I have been in detention for some months now. I do have a fruitful business that runs into the millions of dollars, <laughs> and I have misplaced my wallet. They have taken my wallet from me. If you would be so kind to wire me $1,900, I would pay you back tenfold. Please do not pay any attention to this particular email address because I'm using it for security reasons. I hope you understand that. Uh, you know what? I will get right on that, uh, uh, Mr. <laughs> Sam. Sam. Yeah, Sam, Sam, Sam Dusky, uh, Dasuki. Uh, I, I see the way my bank account is set up with my check and my savings. I have to wait until in the morning to be able to get you that. But uh, I, I'll be right on that. See you in the morning. You know, I, you, I, you know, I apologize. That was not from my e the email bags tonight. That was from my <laughs> spam filter. <laughs> Sam DeSuki Jr. I'll get on that, Sam. Here's a 1-1 one -one coming. To James Loney. I'm glad you sent that email. Breaking ball misses down low. <laughs> to everybody, though, thank you tonight for participating, the emails and the tweets. We try to balance the baseball and the fan interaction. 
And uh, on a night like tonight where the uh, lefties work so quickly it was tough to do. We have the all star game coming down. A couple a lot of, of uh, home runs by Stanton a blast by Cespedes. Two on pitch. And in between that we all we had to try to somehow bring you this game to let you know what's going on here and uh, give you some details about that. So thanks for hanging in there with us. Right now the Marlins pin trying to finish it. Loney is one four three. Couple of fly ball outs for Ramos. Here in the ninth. And it's down low and he walks him. A manager's selection. That's the term used for Ramos arrival on the all star roster and the manager so to speak is only about 120 feet away from him. The one that selected him and that would be Terry Collins. Also the manager that selected Jose Fernandez to appear. And the same manager that selected Kelly Johnson a pinch hit. Loney's running. The Marlins aren't holding him and he takes second. That's defensive indifference. Johnson yesterday an 0 for 1 but a guy that has been an effective uh, left handed bat at times and as his uh, career has gone on more so as a reserve and as a pinch hitter. And as a Met he's uh, played quite well. 15 for 47 that's 319 with three homers in his 21 games with the Mets. Pinch hit home run against the Cubs in the four game sweep. It was his second pinch hit homer of the season. And Ramos right now falls behind 2 0, and the last thing you want to do is bring the tying run to the plate. Travis Darno, who homered yesterday, is that guy. He's on deck. Ramos misses out. 3 and 0. He's missed on six straight pitches. Three and one. Popped him up. Mathis for a look, but it's over the screen. Well, full count. You got Loney at second. He might go with the breaking ball. He's got with the fastball, been able to get back in the count. Remember, he had such good success with the breaking ball early in this inning. He might go back with the breaking ball. Ramos ready. 3 2 to Johnson. Fastball. Pop that one up. Ramos. Ball game. And the Marlins win it after a, a really tough loss yesterday. The fish bounce back and they ride the broad shoulders of Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton with a laser beam homer to give the fish a 2 1 lead, and then a mammoth towering shot, a three run homer to stretch that lead to 5 1. Wei Yan Chen was terrific tonight to get the win. A.J. Ramos, an all star, picks up the save, and Miami evens the series at a game apiece. Marlins Live is coming up.